An American Werewolf in London is a 1981 horror comedy film directed by John Landis. It, the film stars David Naughton, Griffin Dunn, and Jenny Agutter. Uh, an American Werewolf in London is kind of an oddity amongst John Landis's filmography, amongst movies like Animal House or The Blues Brothers or Trading Places, uh, in that it is mostly a horror film uh, with some comedy trappings. Uh, the only other uh, films that really belong with that are Innocent Blood and uh, partially Twilight Zone, the movie. But both of those aren't very good, so uh, on to An American Werewolf in London. The film begins with David, David Naughton, and Jack, Griffin Dunn, who are two backpackers in northern England who get lost on the moors and are attacked by, obviously, uh, a lupine beast, one might even say a werewolf. Uh, David is killed, but, this me but Jack is bitten, meaning that on the onset of the next full moon, he too shall become a werewolf. The film deftly balances horror and comedy, including its use of a soundtrack of its soundtrack, where each each song contains the word "moon." For example, Van Morrison's "Moon Dance," uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival's "Bad Moon Rising," and two renditions of the song "Blue Moon," one slow and mournful, and the other quick and upbeat. Uh, the film's special effects really must be praised, and Rick Baker does an excellent job in the film's first transformation sequence. And really a lot of these effects still hold up to effects still hold up today in a world of CGI dinosaurs and superheroes. Uh, unfortunately, right after that transformation and the first rampage sequence, the film kind of falls apart, as since there's no uh, there's no place for David to go from then on, seeing as there's no cure for werewolfism in this movie's mythology. All he can do is wait to be killed at the climax of the film. Uh, the film relies heavily on black comedy for a lot of its jokes, uh, like the aforementioned soundtrack, and a scene where David is visited by the ghosts of his victims who cheerfully advise him on how he can kill himself. There's also a lot of surreal dream sequences in the movie that really don't make a lot of sense, except as omens of uh, the film's eventual carnage and destruction. Interestingly enough, John Landis himself doesn't consider the film a comedy, though in the interview that he mentioned this, he seemed more to be referring to the duology of comedy and tragedy, and in that case, the film is without a doubt a tragedy. Despite that, uh, An American Werewolf in London is definitely a film that any horror or comedy aficionado should watch at least once. Or, if you really like werewolf movies, you should watch it many more times.